So one of the activities that I'm personally involved with is called NACLO. This is a competition for high school students who are interested in linguistics and computational linguistics. And many of the problems that we use in this class are related to NACLO. So I want to give you an idea what it stands for and uh, what it covers. So NACLO is a competition in linguistics, but it covers also many computational linguistics problems. It has existed since 2007. And uh, it, usually every year about 2,000 students in the United States and Canada participate. And uh, the top eight of them go to the international level. And here I have listed some of the ones who did the most uh, well at the international level. Uh, people like Adam Hesterberg, Rebecca Jacobs, and Alex Wade all won many gold medals at the international level. There are many other countries that do really well in the international competition, places like Russia, in the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Poland, Bulgaria, South Korea, and in recent years, Canada and China. The international contest started in about 2003. The most recent ones were in Manchester in England last year, in Beijing uh, most recently, and then uh, the next one will be in Bulgaria uh, in 2015. Uh, the website for the international competition is shown here. And as you can see, it is related to some other high school competitions, such as the math and physics and chemistry and biology competitions. So here are some of the problems that you can see on NACLO. Some of them are what we call traditional problems. They are about uh, trying to understand a foreign language and specifically some linguistic phenomenon in that language that you have not seen before. So I'm just going to go through those examples very quickly. This is about ancient Greek. The problem was a donkey in every house from 2007. Here's one about Japanese noun compounds from 2008. Uh, here's one about aligning texts uh, from two different languages, in this case, uh, Swedish and Norwegian from 2009. This is one about a writing system for the blind in Japan called Tenji. You have to figure out how those characters, which are similar to Braille in English, are used. This is a more computational example about using finite state automata to understand uh, how uh, words in the language called the Rotokas from uh, the coast of New Guinea are formed. Here's one about writing systems. Specifically, people have to figure out uh, how uh, the Armenian script works by looking at the map and the station names. Some of those names are given in English, so you can uh, use your logical thinking to figure out uh, where they appear on the map. And then once you have figured out where they appear on the map, you have to figure out uh, what the different symbols mean and use those symbols to figure out the names of the remaining stations. Over the years, there have been more than 100 problems used in NACLO. I have picked here some of the most interesting computational problems that you can use uh, to challenge yourselves as part of this class. So uh, this was my brief introduction to NACLO. Later in this class, we're going to look at some of the specific problems that were used in this competition. And I would like to use this opportunity to encourage uh, people to submit problems for future years.